Hi everyone, my name is Mad Matt Lugos and welcome back to Life is Strange Before the Storm, episode 3. So, um, the end of episode 2, uh, the shocking revelation that this sort of mysterious girl in the white dress, Sarah, Sarah, whatever, however you say her silly name, <laughs> um, is, is actually Rachel's mother. Major plot to us. I didn't see it coming. I thought maybe he might have been seeing her as part of his criminal investigation. Um, but it turns out he's actually Rachel's mother, and her, who she thought was a mother knew about it as well from the looks of things because she didn't look shocked. So I don't know whether that means I hadn't thought about this, but I don't know whether that means Rachel is adopted or whether her it's, it's you know. Or it's her father had ha, uh, had Rachel with with there uh, with Sarah, or whether she's adopted and it's just you know her seeking out her child after after she put her up for adoption maybe. Who knows? Very tricky. Um, but uh, the music here in the menu is still getting me pretty excited and nostalgic. I've uh, forgot to correct my volume, um, so. Let me just uh, bump that back up to where it should be. All right, so you know, I'm I'm still I'm still really perfectly comfortable with Chloe and Ra Rachel being being just close friends. I think that I think that fits the world better. I'm sure lots of people disagree with that, but that's how I feel. That's the story I want to play. So. Uh, let's, we're going to get started with episode 3, Hell is Empty, where we're going to have to deal with some tough stuff for Rachel. So, let's get going. Previously, on Life is Strange Before the Storm. I felt like my dad's been lying about something for a while. I just, I didn't know what it was. There is plenty of blame to go around. What does that mean? You forced my hand. This is a consequence of your actions, Chloe. We both agree that the best thing for everyone at this stage is for me to move in. In a million years, I never thought you'd choose David over me. Hey! Black Hole's done with me. I can't go home anymore. Is this junkyard all I've got left? Drew runs Oxy for Damon. Go to Drew's room, find the money, and I'll meet you to pick it up. Whatever you do, don't open the door. Oh, I want my fucking money! Juliet is wailing. That infernal inferno is the culprit, closing down the roads and robbing us of our aerial. No fucking chance. I swear to thee, we shall fly beyond this isle. The corners of the world are mere prologue. What sayest thou to my most hopeful wish? Yes. Let's leave. For real. If you don't mean this, it's... It's just making me feel like shit that this life you're describing isn't going to happen. What would it take to convince you? Why can't you just tell me the fucking truth? Rachel, that woman you saw... That wasn't my mistress. That was your mother. I want to tell you all of it. But are you sure that <laughs> Chloe should be here for... Chloe stays. Of course. In every way that matters, Rose is my wife and your mother. But the woman you saw at the Overlook, her name is Sarah, your birth mother. I'm going to tell you everything, Rachel. Everything I've shielded you from for so long. But the truth can be hard to look at. Is this 
really something you're ready for. Chloe. Um. All right, she wants comfort. I'm here. I'm right here. Good. I need you. Oh, what was the instructions that I missed? Oh. in high school there was one person everyone adored her teachers her friends <laughs> Sarah was everyone's favorite every boy wanted to date her I could barely believe it when she picked me sometimes I think that's what kept me blind for so long she was so alive, so passionate about everything. Early on, though, I realized I wasn't enough for her. While the rest of us were pursuing college, careers, families, Sarah wasn't looking for any of that. She was looking for escape. Sounds familiar. I really don't see why he'd tell us all these intimate little details. I really think that... I really don't think someone in this situation would tell their daughter these kinds of little details because they're... You're, you're going to make her feel like she's going to end up the same way if this is leading to a, a negative outcome, like, you know, maybe she was involved with drugs or maybe she didn't want to be a mom or something like that. Or maybe, you know, she, she, she didn't have any focus and she was always looking for an escape. It's just going to make Rachel feel like she's going to end up the same way. I really don't feel like anybody would go into this kind of detail if you were telling your daughter this. You'd just tell her... You know, we were childhood sweethearts, and yeah, I really don't think you'd go into that kind of personality detail, but yeah, whatever. <clears throat> when Sarah became pregnant, I thought it would solve everything, and it did for a little while. What did you what postnatal becoming your father? It's the greatest moment of my life. There was so much love, but I was still blind. Well, postnatal depression, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I can see where this is going. Postnatal depression. However much she loved you then, it wasn't enough. For Sarah, the need to escape was always oh, there maybe not oh okay yeah drugs for over yeah. a year I tried to help her I made myself believe that she was still a good person that no matter what happened she would never do anything to hurt you. I was wrong. Eventually, I saw her for who she really was. A destructive person. Someone who could never be satisfied. Anyone 
even the love of her own daughter. I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. So I made a choice. I was never going to let her harm you again. So he just gave up on her, basically. What a coward. What you saw at the Overlook, Rachel, it was true, we kissed. It was the saddest kiss of my life. It was a kiss goodbye. I told her that I was happy for her. That she felt like she'd gotten her life together. Finally. But she didn't get to just decide one day to be a mother. Not after what she'd done. But after all the people she hurt. All the lives she destroyed. I told her she'd been given the greatest gift in the world. The chance to be your mother. And she squandered it. It pained me to hurt her like that. But I'd do it again. And again and again to keep you safe. God, this guy is so melodramatic. Thinks he's a hero, doesn't he? So that was the first time you've seen her or spoken with her in 15 years? No. I send her money. Every single month. It's... Our arrangement. But now she wants to see me? Yes. But Rachel, it cannot be. Yeah, it's not your decision, dude. You think you have the right to decide that for her? When I left Sarah, when I took Rachel away, I truly believe I saved her life. And I will continue to protect her no matter what. But maybe she's different now. I mean, people change, right? Maybe so. But consider that for 15 years, she's preferred that money to you. <laughs> Rachel. God, that was a bit blunt. I think I need to lie down. She's about to faint. <laughs> Rachel and Chloe, where are you guys? We're at the Tempest cast party. I already texted Rachel like eight times. Stop it. Oh, hey, I don't think we're making it. Oh my god, can I just stop and read, please? <laughs> Chloe, you should come. Yeah, Chloe, you did awesome, baby. Hey, Chloe, great job tonight. Brooke? All right. Thanks, I can't. But you were amazing. Without you, there would have been no show. Seriously, just come. Bring Rachel. Sorry, guys. So we've got a new character entry for, for Sarah. Every time I say the name, all I have in my head is Matt Sarah, the, uh, the, the MMA fighter who won the title against GSP. I will insert a picture of him now. <laughs> What can you say about a woman so mysterious, her own daughter never heard of her until now? 
From what James told us, Sarah is a drug addict who got herself mixed up in all sorts of crazy shit. And by drugs, I mean OD and end up dead in an alleyway drug. Drugs, not smoke a bowl and watch anime. When Rachel was a baby, Sarah would get high when she was supposed to be looking after her. Things got so fucked up that James finally had to take Rachel away. The funny thing is, even as James talked about all the horrible things Sarah had done, he still seemed, I don't know, fixated, I guess. You could see the power she had over him. Actually, when he was talking about how beloved and magnetic Sarah used to be, I couldn't help think of Rachel. I wonder if James sees that too. Maybe it's what makes him so afraid of her. Anyway, now Sarah is in Arcadia Bay looking to meet Rachel. After years of taking James's money to stay away, suddenly she wants a relationship with her daughter. James seems sceptical. And Rachel, I can't even imagine what Rachel must be going through. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying James is wrong. You know, if she's, you know, she's shooting up in the same room as the baby and not looking after her and all that stuff, that's, that's obviously extremely irresponsible. But to just pay her off and not let her even see her, maybe once a week, once a month or, or something, you know, ultimately that's a bad idea. I understand that, you know, you can remove you can remove the child from from an irresponsible parent's care, but you can't rem, you shouldn't really remove the contact. Is what I mean. You know, you don't get to choose who your parents are, um, even if they decide they don't necessarily want to be your parent. If that makes sense. So, yeah, she, they should have contact, but as long as Rachel understands, you know, to to keep her distance from her emotionally I suppose it's a complicated situation though alright let's catch up with our um, diary entries we've only got one page haven't we Yeah. I used to think the strangest thing about the Ambers was how normal they were they seemed like a bad 90s sitcom family and I did my best to play the part of wacky yet lovable best friend I chatted with Rose, Rachel's surprisingly cool mom and even helped to set the table the goal was to get in and out of there without causing a scene so we could make our escape about that. Turns out Rachel couldn't sit back and let her cheating father act all high and mighty. I tried to distract her and re remind her of our goal. It almost worked. Then Rachel snapped. I guess she just can't stand the line anymore. She told her mum about James making out with that woman. Everyone started yelling and the next thing I knew Rachel was going full destruction on the table. That's when the truth finally came out. Rachel's mum equals not her mum. Rachel's real mum equals the makeout woman. Mind equals blown. Chloe, the wacky yet lovable. Oh man. Rachel um... What was that a new thing? I... I can... Rachel only knew half the truth when she set that fire. Yeah. What if she'd known everything? <sighs> um, this must be hard for you too, Mr. Amber. It could be far worse. My biggest fear is that Rachel will try to meet Sarah. <laughs> I've dreaded it. So that's why you never told her? You have no idea what pain Sarah's caused. Her addiction has led her to do terrible things. I don't want Rachel to go through any of that. I mean, but you just, you can't control these sort of things with your kids, can you? You know, you can try and do right by them. You know, which he he did in he sort of half did by by taking her out of her care, but you just ca you can't wrap them, um, bubble wrap them, and stop them experiencing things that are inevitably going to be difficult. But you know, you're going to go through difficult things. Uh, it should be up to Rachel. But shouldn't that be up to Rachel to decide? Rachel is curious and determined. <laughs> She's always going to want to know more. I can believe that. She won't be concerned about her own safety. She never has been. Do you think Sarah is involved with any of the drug dealers around here? It wouldn't surprise me if she were. 
That's who she is. Chloe, I believe Rachel trusts you more than anyone else right now. Is this where you ask me to manipulate Rachel into doing what you want? This is where I ask you to do as your conscience dictates. But please, put my daughter's safety first. Um, I don't know what try the truth is going to lead to. But yeah, I will. That is something I will always do. She's so <coughs> You are too. But I know you've experienced loss. Protect her from that. Please. I'll do what I can. I care about her too, you know? I know. Thank you. Yeah, he's just, he's just been too, he's tried to control too much. You have to have a, a mix of sort of boundaries and, and freedom, don't you? Hello, Rose. Hey, Mrs. Amber. I think it's Rose at this point, considering everything. Okay, Rose. Sorry about it. Sorry that tonight turned out so... Differently. That's all right. I'm really quite glad that you're here. Me too. I'm glad too. You've had to cope with much worse, I know. I'm grateful Rachel has someone as strong as you. How are you doing, Chloe? How am I doing? Your generation loves to talk about how awkward different things are. Well, this must be pretty awkward, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's super weird. I guess I'm not great. Rachel and I were really happy a few hours ago, and now... Maybe you can see why James wanted to keep this a secret. There are many painful things about Rachel's past, including my own role in hiding the truth. I mean, they're both true. I don't want to pick either. He did lie and she did choose the money. I mean... I do find it kind of hard to believe she could have, you know... I mean, difficult to swallow that for 15 years she chose not to do anything about it. That shows that she's a bit of, um, I don't know, but she's dealing with addiction problems. I don't think they were trying to, I, I thought it was good, they were hinting at postnatal depression, but I don't think it had anything to do with that from the looks of things. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, but, he, you know, he, was say, he said about her need for escapism before she had the child, so. Um, might just be a lack of responsibility, perhaps. I'm sure, there's, I'm sure there's more to it than that that I imagine we'll learn when we meet Sarah. But uh, let's not antagonize her. She chose the money. Sarah shouldn't have taken money over seeing her daughter. You know, I am so thankful to her that she did. It gave me the opportunity to be Rachel's mother. I never knew how much I could love someone until I had Rachel. Hearing the truth after all these years hurt Rachel more than anything. I'm not happy with James for the whole way this came out. You're not happy with James? What about what he did at the Overlook? It might be hard for you to understand, but after 13 years of marriage, I'm not threatened by what happened. You're right. I don't understand. You don't have to worry about me or James. Rachel's the one who needs you right now. Do you think Sarah is dangerous? I've never met her, so I don't know. 
but I'm inclined to trust my husband. His entire life is about keeping people safe. Rachel's extremely fortunate to have him as her father. Thanks. Thank you, Chloe. Yeah, I don't think Rose should be angry about him kissing Sarah because she knows the situation. You know, it's not like he did any more. It's just, it's just, it's weird when you see someone like that again, or you sort of all the feelings flood back for a for a moment or whatever. You, it's almost like a bit of a time machine. And as long as you're not taking it any further, I, I, I don't think there's much of an issue with that. I suppose when you're young, you're dealing in more absolutes in terms of your uh, relationships like that. some way to show Rachel that I'm here for her. I heard you. I know what my objective. Yeah, so like every time I see that, that stupid Square Enix logo, um, it just always annoys me a little bit. <laughs> just because, you know, I grew up playing the PS1 era Final Fantasy games. And the PS2, I suppose, as well. And uh, when it was still Squaresoft. And uh, ever since they, they merged and to make Square Enix, like, Final Fantasy, in my opinion, has just been awful. Um, yeah, they really ruined the series. So, like, you know, to me, it's a series of ten games. Everything afterwards is uh, is something completely different, and they're not the most ethical publisher in the world. They have a lot of dodgy DLC practices and stuff. So, it's one of the reasons I was a bit apprehensive about playing the game because I don't necessarily want to support Square Enix. But hey ho. Rachel has so many inspirations, she can barely keep them all contained. So this is obviously going to end up with us meeting Sarah, I think. Um, hmm. I just wish he wouldn't have spoken about all those sort of similarities in her personality. Because it's going to... That's going to have the opposite effect that he wants. He's going to make her want to meet her more because she's going to feel like she's like her. The yin and badass yang of Rachel Amber. Before all, el all else, be armed, Machiavelli. <laughs> we were so close to making our break last night. Now, I don't know. Yeah, that's a fire hazard. Rachel even knows how to make a dinky lamp look cool. Yeah, and start fires. That is a, <laughs> that's a fire hazard. Rachel's surrounded by so much love, yet she seems so uh, alone. To our wonderful daughter on the night of her first show, break a leg, we love you. Makes sense that Rachel needs two signs to contain her awesomeness. I shall call her Lion Crab from now on. Light. This light needs more light. Can we switch the bulbs? Wonder what I could find around here to brighten up that night light. Is there a section on how to walk fours through batshit crazy family drama? No? Type 4, the individualist. Type 4s can be the most creative of the types. 
when they are able to reach their potential, that their best type 4s are inspired, productive, sensitive and independent. In a difficult environment, however, type 4s can fall into melancholy and self-indulgent. Indulgence. Fours craft, craft their own identities by picking and choosing a select few of their emotions to rely on, and all but blocking out the rest. Type fours define themselves by their differences from other people. While this can lead to incredible talent and creativity, it can also lead to an unhealthy obsession on their perceived deficiencies and flaws. The best thing for a four is to learn how to let go of feelings from the past and focus on the potential that the future holds. Mm. These things are always, you know, they're like uh, faith healers and stuff. They just tell people what they want to hear. May you always be safe. Sure. But from who? I mean, he can't, I'm not saying I agree with what her dad did, but, you know, if, if you were to imagine walking into the room where your, 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 your newborn was in her cot to see her mother with a, you know, needle in her arm on the floor with the baby crying, you know, you, you know, you just imagine what that sight would be like. But at the same time, wouldn't you just want to help her? Wouldn't you want to get her into rehab? Wouldn't you want to, you know, if you really loved her that much, you know, you don't have to just sort of forsake her and, and placate her with money. You know, he gave up on her really, didn't he? I know you have to put your child first, but it doesn't... Need a way to make yes. Yes, the torch. Rachel might not survive her family, but <laughs> at least she'll survive the zombie apocalypse. Chloe, I'm leaving the door unlocked in case you don't have your key. Please come home. Doesn't matter that it's after curfew. I'm on my car right now. Please, I'll text her back, Chloe, for God's sake. I could get grades like this. <laughs> I just don't want to. Latin honors, American experience, 20th century literature, biology honors, drama lab, and physical ed and PE. I know something Miss Arcadia doesn't. Weird. Dear Miss Arcadia, what's the real deal with the fire north of town? And when's it going to come down here and incinerate us all in its fiery hug of death asking for a friend? Rose before bronies. First, guy for cake, come on. Didn't the fire start the day after firework walk was here? This is a strange one, friends. ABFD sources say they've never seen anything like it. No idea where it came from. No idea why it's lasted this long. Total mystery. Time to put on your tinfoil hearts and start speculating. There's a dragon with matches that's loose on the town. Prescott's like 50% serious. Why only 50? Prescott's are shady as shit. You'd really put this past them? They've probably had some incriminating evidence to burn, or better yet, bodies. Not to mention the chemtrails they drop all over town. Highly flammable. Occam's razor, people. Just some kids getting high in the woods. As for the weirdness, the town is weird. What else is new? This guy knows. <laughs> uh, but why male models? We're built on an Indian belly at burial ground, are we not? Native people's burial ground. And no, no, we're not. <laughs> Burn, I get it. Previous topic, legalised Oregon movement. How to get involved. Next topic, Blackwell tuition spike. It's coming. Rachel's always made being an A student seem so easy. Almost sad to see all this effort. I think Rachel could 
Use another subject. But which one? <laughs> Herbology. That's the one. Herbology, page 420, Puff Puff versus Pasta. I, I couldn't read what it said. Hard to believe the show was only a few hours ago. To our shining star. Seems like everything has changed since then. Mum and Dad. <laughs> At least she'll have something from tonight. Even you, Willie, couldn't come up with the tragedy Rachel's going through. <laughs> no, I think his tragedies were decidedly worse. And always result in death. I bet Rachel would rather be anywhere but here. I suppose Rachel's story does end up with death, but it's not going to end up in death within this game. Maybe I can make the world a less scary place. I don't want to throw her quotes back at her. Something I said. Back on the train, I said... Let me know if you need an accomplice. I've heard that Rachel and Nathan hang out sometimes. But it still seems hard to believe. No, yeah, that's not going to end well for her, is it? Okay, I think that is everything in the room that we can possibly look at. Or graffiti. Let's uh, sort this light. Switch the bulbs around. Oh, okay. All ready for Rachel's light show. Better get her attention first. I can't imagine what Rachel is thinking right now. I want her to tell me when she's ready. I know I've been saying I don't necessarily like Rachel too much, but this is obviously a horrible thing to go through, so. Get her attention first. Oh, so yeah, she's the stars. I hope I've not done this in the wrong order. Hey, check it out. It's beautiful. I thought you might like it. I've always loved stars. Why? They remind us there's so much beauty out there. Which we almost never see. Guess I've had a hunch. Then I learned the truth. The stars we're seeing have already been dead for millions of years. They're all lies. Still beautiful, though. But that doesn't make them any less beautiful, right? 
I don't know. If they're not even real, then what's the point? <sighs> it's all lies. Everything. <laughs> My entire life. My dad. <laughs> My mom. If I can even call her that anymore. And that other woman? My real mom? She's the biggest lie of all. I can't trust any of them. I think you're the only one in the world I can trust. Maybe. I don't know. I bet there's, like, one other chick in Australia who's super trustworthy. No chance. <laughs> You're one in a hundred infinities, Chloe Price. I wore this bracelet my entire life. I never even asked why. Never even thought about it. Somehow, I think I always knew. Even when I didn't know. That my real mother was gone. It's always difficult to know how transparent you should be with a child who might be in a situation like this, you know, if they're adopted or there's a complication like that. At what age do you tell them? Well, it's not that all the beauty of the stars is a lie, it's just that all that all all beauty is fleeting. I guess that's the that's the reality of it, isn't it? We're all victims of time. You know, the music in the first game was good, but honestly, I have enjoyed the music a bit more in this. She's here right now. When I see her, you that she came here <laughs> for me. I think I need to see her. Is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. Of course not. It might be tough to track her down. Yeah, that's true. Luckily, I've got my secret weapon. But what if we can't find her? It's not like I can ask my dad. Frank. I have no idea where to start. Yeah, I've got this. Let me handle it. Really? Really. <laughs> Mysterious. I like it. 
Of course, even if we know where she is, we need a way to get to her. I can't just ask my parents for a ride. I've got that too. Don't worry. I've got that one covered too. You do? Yep. In fact, anything you could come up with, I'll handle it. It's just like I told that biker dude at the mill, who was a lot scarier than this mom of yours could ever be. There could be flamethrowers, an army of robot ninjas, and a motherfucking dragon on a leash between you and her. And I would still find a way to get you there. <laughs> Chloe fucking Price. My magical Shakespeare fairy. Shut up. <laughs> but once we find her, uh, how do I talk to her? What do I say? Can we have more options than this? Some of this is quite important. This is important in terms of how she interacts with her. Like she needs to be guarded with her. And not because she's so vulnerable at the minute. She doesn't. She can't invest too much in an estranged mother figure, can she? Yeah, you'll 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 know when you see her. After my dad died, I was worried I wouldn't know how to talk to him anymore. But somehow. When we speak, I always know what to say. When you speak? In my dreams. He's there. And it's so real. It's almost like it's another part of my life. It used to be the only part that mattered. I've never told anyone about that. Weird, huh? Uh, Rachel? I was just thinking. Maybe I was wrong before. <laughs> Who cares if the stars are dead? As long as we can still see them, that means they're real. Oh, God. To us. Right? Right. <laughs> Chloe just shared something that she's just never shared with anyone else before. Something something really close and personal to her. And she didn't even listen to it. She just responds with some nonsense about the stars. God, this girl is... Oh, man. do it wrong that was one time when are you going to let it go remember when we used to work on cars together those are some of my favorite memories or are they just my memories don't you mean my memories I don't think you remember after you're dead. Touche. All right, you win. Why don't you go take a look? You sure? Ugh. 
What's wrong? Don't you see anything? There it is. Fine. It's... The spark plug. No, that's not it. I just had that replaced. Isn't improv supposed to be all about yes and? Yes and what? Dad, stop. N none of this is real. You're not real. Ra Rachel's family isn't real. This whole thing, it, it's, it's all just theater. Well, you know what William Shakespeare said. The world's a stage. Something about the whole world being a stage. So, might as well act the fuck out of it. Nailed it. But I don't want to be an actor. I just want to be myself. Give me a break. Hmm. Well, maybe there's a reason we pretend. Maybe the lies we tell each other are less horrible than the truths we keep hidden. Wow. That's pretty dark, Dad. Where do you think you get it from? There's my cue. Dad? Relax, sweetie. It's all pretend, right? Right. Just a bit of stage magic. Floodlights. Sound effects. Chloe. Look at me. Look at me, sweetheart. It's going to be okay. Dad! Who on earth wrote that boo in there? Seriously. All right. <laughs> Who wrote that boo in there? <laughs> I just pulled me out of that so harshly. <sighs> All right, guys, I think I'll leave that one there. Uh, we'll see the, the morning after next time, so... Yeah, Rachel, my God. I mean, Chloe just spilled her guts there about the dream she's been having and she just stood just in one ear and out the other. I know she's going through a lot, but it's not... Yeah, she, it's annoying me. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah, we're going to potentially meet Sarah next time. Um, we'll see how Rachel deals with that. Um... Doesn't seem like the kind of person that's going to be too useful for Rachel. Um, maybe she'll just be a bad influence. I have, I have no idea how it's going to go. I'm just feeling a bit annoyed after that little ending bit of the interaction. But, um, Chloe's still being haunted in her dreams by her dad, by her father's death. Um, they're getting more and more invasive. You know, um, you know, I've, I, I, I do have a bit of a knowledge of, of sort of how dreams are constructed and stuff, and you know, people tend to take pretty big liberties with how they construct dreams. You wouldn't in a in a dream with such clear people in it and clear interactions, you would not get such abstractions like like are present in some of these dreams. But uh, that's just nitpicking, isn't it? I suppose. Okay, guys. So yeah, if you enjoyed this one, maybe leave me a like. Um, Subscribe if you want to see the rest of the episode. Just remember everybody, never trust an on-crate. Right, I'll see you next time.